Okay. Um, I, I want to add two more things to the, the previous session. Uh, the question about the, the, um, the AI in particular, the machine learning, um, nothing precludes individual rules from, from using machine learning or AI. And in fact, some of them really technically do use components on, on a variety of things or, or statistical things. Um, but the, the goal was to have an overall system that was easy to configure. And, and also one of the reasons for AI not being the initial focus in this is it's, a, it's an awful lot of a black box at the moment. So you, you run the models, you get the answers back, and we have to prove why certain things happen both to the investigators and to the regulators and things like that. So um, they mentioned running it as a different channel. That's definitely a possibility um, and, and potentially it could be recommended because you would want to have the, the machine learning spot something, but then the actual algorithmic based system back that up right with, with some proof and then i wanted to talk a little bit about the the speed because i saw i saw matt's face as uh, uh it was pointed on him because he was looking at the performance we did not optimize for this part because interdicting for the mojo loop part was taken out if you recall early in the test we were we were sub the standard times of what you wanted for interdicting so we can do interdicting but we didn't do that in this performance test we did we did more high volume and as you see the system works well and, and, and recovers so okay, let me let me get into this this uh, session here. Um, first off, I, I do have a horrible cold, uh, cold, and hopefully I'll I'll make it well through without coughing on you. I've got a lot of over the counter drugs in me, so we'll see if we can get through this. Um, this is about doing uh, Mojo Loop as a first class citizen on Microsoft Azure. Uh, we already have talked about that in the past, so a little bit of this is just a recap for people that maybe don't know what's going on. Um, it's not really an official work stream within Mojo Loop. It's um, kind of an, an adjacent thing um, that we're doing for Microsoft. And let's keep in mind that Microsoft is the customer here. So, so that means that we're doing this for their benefit and to make it run on Azure and consume Azure resources. So um, there may be some generic things like, you, like in the Helm charts that we're, and we're talked about a little bit ago. Um, we're taking advantage of all that, but we're not intending to be generic. We're intending to actually work with Azure and, and use Azure. So, so why is it important? We're gonna cover that a uh, little bit on the adjustment to scope, a uh, reminder of what the actual scope was, and then the work completed in progress. And I wanna also stress that this is an overview, uh, a summary or a, a snapshot of where we are. This isn't intended to be a technical session. We really think we should do an after action review and a technical session or, or deep dive at the end of this, um, you know, in like the next PI. And uh, you'll get all the documentation. You can, from a community standpoint, you can come and, and, and sit in our sessions and join us as far as, uh, as far as that goes. I know we've tried to get that going with Tom and there's been a variety of conflicts with that, but uh, um, okay. So, so why is it important? Um, the, this is pulled straight off the Azure website. Here's just some of what you can do. Test, deploy enterprise apps, uh, create mobile apps, all kinds of crazy things, gain insights from your data. Um, the reality is, is, is there's a huge amount of marketing behind this and a lot of people that have learned this ecosystem. So by working well within the ecosystem, um, people that are familiar with it can easily get started. So we'll reach a lot more people, there's a lot more options, and we get a lot of validation from these artifacts um, that, that is paid for by Microsoft. So that's a good thing for the community. Um, I liked this part, build your next great app idea uh, in the cloud with Azure free account. So um, you know we we get we get that benefit that benefit that um, they're going to give these people a free layer so that they can get started and play automatically have a sandbox and things like that. So um, a little bit of the benefit of this. So what are we doing? Um, how do we make this a first class citizen on Azure? Uh, first, we make it cloud based and we uh, make it so that it can use Azure based resources. We do all the, um, the components of splitting out the databases and things like that that were referenced earlier. We make it work within Marketplace. So if someone wants to start within Marketplace and push a button, uh, they can do that. And probably the most important thing for the community here is we make it work with Azure Stack, all right? So Azure Stack lets you run local resources on the ground. And that's a big issue because we have data residency issues and rules um, in a lot of countries. So we can basically still manage from a cloud perspective, but run a local stack. It, it also makes it more complex for the work that we're doing because certain things run on Azure stack, certain things don't, certain things run a little different. 
And I'll, I'll talk about that when we get to the, the scope adjustment. So the goal is to optimize performance and then the ease of installation and management. So we'll have all the ARM templates um, and uh, you know, for a variety of different ways will be created. And then we'll leverage the Azure management portal. So basically someone that's familiar with Azure can simply and easily manage Mojo Loop and get it on the network. So um, adjustment to scope. Um, we have a, a finite amount of time and budget to do this. Um, the resources have been allocated, um, both physical resources and, and people for a certain period of time. So we kind of have this constraint box that we have to work with it. There have been um, various delays and availability of resources, both physical staffing, subject matter experts. Um, and the reality is this is complicated and involved. So in particular with the event hubs, which is something that we really want to work because we think that can add a tremendous amount of cost savings. Event hubs, if you recall from the last time, is a messaging system that runs um, and scales rather well within Microsoft and, and runs very affordably and that you only use the bare minimum of what you need. Um, but it, it, sitting in front of it, it has the Kafka API. So we don't have to change the code base. And what we do have to do is all the extra things to make that run and work within the environment, uh, which is what we're working on. So as we got into this, we discovered that um, it's a lot more involved. We knew it was going to be involved, but um, it's, it's a lot more involved than we thought uh, in that, in particular, different versions in the stack run completely different. And different versions of the stack don't run it. So what we did is we shoved that to the end of the project so that we um, uh, will uh, we'll still try to fit that in. We'll still try to get it complete. Um, but the more beneficial thing to the community and also, frankly, to Microsoft is that a, a stack impl implementation works. So like for w Rwanda, for example, they do have data res res residency issues. So they, they've, they've built out the POC on Amazon and it's up in the cloud. But when they go live, do they want something they can manage in the cloud and be a local stack? So those those global resources can each easily manage, you know, what's going on in the environment. So um, that's what. So we we shoved that up first, basically. So what was the overall scope? Um, first was to get a pure OSS baseline set up. Uh, that was done pretty quick. Uh, the stateful components, um, swapping out the databases and the event hubs. I just explained what, where that is at. Uh, Percona and MySQL to uh, be replaced by the uh, uh, platform as a service uh, SQL. And yeah, excuse me. And there's several forms of scripting. Uh, a lot of scripting in setting up of the environment. A lot of scripting dealing with the certifications and things like that. So you know the OSS baseline complete. Stateful components complete. Obviously with the adjustment in scope. Uh, the, the SQL Server components, the other stateful items were, were complete, and the scripting for the cloud-based version is, is done and complete. So the pure cloud implementation works. Now, on the API management, so WSO2 and, and that stack, we, we replaced that entirely with the API management uh, layer uh, that sits within Azure. There's a lot of management functionalities and, and, and benefits with that. Uh, as well as, frankly, some performance and some optimizations that can be we done by handling that. So we, we did swap that out. Um, and there, there's a scripting phase two, which is automating the work carried about out within the API management, creation of the certificates and things like that. DFSP authentication, we replaced that whole layer. Um, so the creation of the certifications, as well as creation of, a, of an actual DSP into the system. And then we really um, haven't looked much with the testing toolkit what to do because there's really no reason to change any of that. So the API management is complete. The scripting at this level is complete. The DFSP work is all complete. Basically, it's it's functional on the Azure cloud. Uh, we're in kind of cleanup mode and, and tidying things up. So as far as um, phase three is is really the IAC work. So how do we push a button and deploy? Um, that's pretty much done. Um, we're very close to that being done. Um, but uh, there's going to be more work with that in relationship to, uh, in particular, the stack, which is the next area. Documentation. Um, so all the documentation that needs to be done has been going on as, as we're moving forward. Um, but keep in mind, we have to have Azure guides and we have to have stuff for the community. So there's both Microsoft, who in fact owns this project, 
um, and all the things that we need to do to make it work with a marketplace and work with Microsoft support staff and things like that have to be created. So there's a lot of additional documentation. We kind of have two streams of documentation that'll come out of this. Um, and then stretch goals, nice to have, would be make it work with application insights. And I really don't have a good update on that. Uh, the guys have been playing with that. We are getting good, uh, good metrics and tracking out of that from what I understand. So project breakdown, we basically have three epics, uh, replatforming, which is largely done, the Azure stack porting and the Azure marketplace. So out of that, there's been 22 high level features that were created that supported that uh, 30, 34 items in the backlog, 85 tasks. And we only found three bugs within the system uh, or things that we felt like we should classify as bugs. There were plenty of things that didn't work and had to be refactored, but uh, really only three bugs. So these are some of the feature areas. Um, you know, the database layer as a service, uh, scope confirmation, um, the architecture and design, all the AK, uh, AKS work, all the CADES work, um, the baseline Azure infrastructure, you know, the API manager messaging, ops tooling, baseline deployment of the OSS, um, testing validation, marketplace requirements and design, marketplace install payloads, uh, deployment scripts, there are in fact separate deployment scripts that work with the marketplace that have to be created. Um, the stack architecture, design and architecture, um, the dev and test for that. And then the, the events hub, right? The, it's the HCI component that works different. Um, so that specifically that, that work has gone on and then we decided to move that to the back of the project. Um, all the optimization is still ongoing. We're continuing to optimize. Uh, all the I, IAS is, is basically um, there all the AKS work, everything is there. Um, the I, IC scripting is all but done. And then we'll revisit the event hub. So we move that to the end. So those are the features. So working with the community, I know there were um, requests to work with the community, in particular with Tom. Tom, we've, we've, we've touched base with you for whatever reasons, you know, that's just not, not worked out to date. Um, I think you got retasked and, and, and we've had a lot of changes as well. So um in particular anybody is welcome to sit in on these the sprint planning sessions or sit in on the uh we do st two stand-ups a week I, I would point you um to the the team if anybody has any questions on that they can reach out to me and uh, people can sit on that that is uh, south africa time that that works um, um so we've worked closely with the devops work streams and uh where the you know changes are you know need to be made um so there have been a couple of change requests uh, you know, any shims or adjustment to code to be made will be discussed with the TGB and the DA. There have been no need for any of those whatsoever at this point in time. Um, I, I don't actually envision it based on what we've seen so far. Uh, so far. And, and again, remember the intention is not to do anything that will create it for. This is just DevOps work to make it work on the Azure platform. Okay. Yes, there's a lot of scripting and things like that that goes on, but those just become additional assets that work on the Azure platform. So very high level work breakdown structure uh, as far as what's going on. Um, I, I just kind of collapsed this uh, to the end. Um, the replatforming, as you can see, is basically all but all but done. Um, you know, the ops tooling, AKS, et cetera, the DFSP onboarding. Um, the IC scripts is really the only thing that they're getting to the end of right now, as far as that goes. And it'll continue to be adjusted as we do the event hubs work. And we've moved that out. Um, excuse me, let me move this. Got you guys over the right end of my slide here. Uh, so that'll that'll start back up and um, in, in May, in the middle of May. So we're getting very close. Um, we actually, because we can stand on a lot of work that's been done already, the Azure Stack porting, notice how short that is. I mean, there's been work that's been that's gone on with that in mind, or we've been keeping that in mind as we've gone. But really, um, it's just going on from April through through mid May, as far as to get that done. So that's all the design work, um, the dev and testing work that that goes on with that. So we expect to have that all done by mid May. Um, same thing with the marketplace. Now that's all. That's obviously subject to availability. We've got uh, uh, the SMEs on the marketplace and on the stack are all over the world. Um, Liquid is providing the um, Azure stack to work with uh, out of Kenya. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of resources to make this this happen. But the biggest thing on this is that the event hubs is coming back um, in mid May. Uh, the project does run through June, so we do think that we'll be we we'll, 
we'll be real close to pulling it off. And if not, we'll figure out how to get some additional time. Oops. So current work items and the backlog, um, there's you know 36 new items. Um, we go through a new approved committed to do in progress and done stage. Um, approved is, uh, there's only one item out there. There's four items in the committed stage and 34 in the to-do. Um, in progress or in flight, seven. So as you can see, this follows a pretty basic pattern, but I guess the to show the project of the process um, and, and of the project, uh, we are creating good backlogs so that there's always something to, to do on that. Um, these are some of the items that have been done. I just thought I would highlight a few. Um, all the logical components were redone to work with uh, what could become an Azure component, did become a, an Azure component. Uh, deploying and testing the AKA clusters and dealing with K8s, uh, installed AKS in, in many different ways um, and, and possibilities. Uh, there was a spike at the beginning of the project that um, to work with the latest Helm charts, and uh, we got that going. Um, we modified all the Helm charts to work with the you know with the static items, the databases, and things like that. Um, SQL is now as a service. Um, again, we we automated the creation and authentication of um, a, a DFSP and an ID and the creation of certs. And that basically uses the scripting environment and uses the function server to deal with that. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, created a local way for the dev environments to work. Um, and again, that uses, that uses Azure, uh, excuse me, Azure functions. Um, and we added the Mojo Loop services to the API manager. There was a lot of work around the API, API manager. And that's just to, you know, I don't want to go in detail on this. Again, this wasn't supposed to be a deep dive. This is just a, an overview of where we are. I, I suggested the next, the final PI, we, we do a lessons learned and things like that. So what's left through June, uh, the project does run through June as a reminder, uh, 522 is when we're expected to pick back up the um, event hubs uh, components. What's going on right now is the Azure stack, Azure stack porting and the marketplace. Um, so yeah, we've got, uh, basically that's, that's really where we are. Um, we've got, uh, June is also for Slack and any lingering items that, uh, that sit within the project. Um, June is also for refining the documents, um, shifting the artifacts to the Microsoft repositories and shifting the artifacts to the open source rep uh, repositories. All right. So any questions? That Lewis back there. That is Lewis yeah. back there. Um, okay. Lewis. Um, yeah. I'll allow two questions. So Lewis, you get the first one. Tom, I'll give you the second. Michael, I can see you trying to raise your hand up. Is that no? All right. <laughs> Just stretch. Sure. Um, Michael, uh, Lewis, and then uh, Tom. Hello. Thanks, Greg. This is yeah, really exciting to see all the pieces come together. Um, have you done any cost profiling on on like a full deployment sort of scale? And if so, can you speak to that at all? Yeah, we've we've got that in mind. Um, to be honest, that'll come more towards the end of the project. It, it's not technically in scope, but it is something that we want. And in particular, we want the event hubs to be working because it should be a much more efficient model um, than, than, than having uh, Kafka run. And that's because of how it scales and, and basically how it's priced. Um, so we really, we really do want that to work. And in particular, we want the stack pricing to, to be there because we think that's really uh, a good thing in particular for Africa and, and everywhere where data residence is needed. So that'll, that'll come in at the end. So we, we've got, we do have that in mind. Great, thank you. And another quick one. Um, you mentioned you switched from WSO2 to the native or the Azure API gateway product. Yeah. How difficult yeah. was that? That actually went a lot faster than I thought. I mean, it, I, I felt like suddenly they were done. Um, it really wasn't, wasn't difficult. Um, I, I would say I, I've got, um, today's a holiday in South Africa and the guys are, uh, are on a, a well-deserved break. Um, so Monday is also a holiday. So most people take tomorrow and the next day off as well. So that way they get a super long, long weekend. Um, what I would recommend is um, that, I, that I put you in contact with Jason for the details on that. 
um, but it was actually a lot easier than I expected. I, I just, I, I, I kept waiting for all the little things to find all over the place that weren't addressed or we didn't know, and that's not been the case. So cool. that, that Thank bodes you very much. well. That, that bodes well for what yeah. you're doing, with ambassador, and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Liz. Tom. Hey, thanks, Greg. That's um, uh, you know, I remain I remain excited by this project just because of what you said to start with the reach. Um, but a couple of couple of things, the event hubs and uh, and the uh, MySQL service coming back. I thought that wasn't available on edge. Has something changed there? Is that now being available on edge? Yeah, there's a different there's a different version. Um, so we do have to go back to the containerized version for MySQL. You're you're correct. It's not available on on on, on the edge devices. Um, that was that was disappointing. We thought they would have a, a refined, more fine tuned version, but they they don't. Um, so that that will be the case when you're running a local copy. The event hubs is available on the HCI version. It is not available on the two other versions. So the, the three versions are one that is, is a hardware stack. Um, uh, I, I would consider them standard pancake boxes for a type of rack mount scenario. Um, then there is a bare bones where you provide, they provide the software, you provide the hardware. And so they really can't do much for that for people that want to do that. Um, and then the HCI version is is really a I call it more of a data center option. It's it's uh, has, has a lot of functionality, and that's where we ran into. I won't call it difficulty, but we discovered that it does have event hubs, but um, there's various caveats with it. So we're going to probably wind up with with two ways to work with event hubs in the end. We're bringing it back, um, you know, back into the project. So I don't have all the answers on, on for that on you. Yeah. So. Okay, and the second one, can could you just clarify the um, IAC work that you're doing? That that is around ARM templates, right? It's not around the existing IAC. I, I think we had that discussion. Yeah. It was yeah. confusing to me then. I'm, I'm sure it would be confusing to others. So, could you clarify that? Yeah, it's it basically we're we're using the the whole um, CI/CD platform of Azure. So it's all around ARM templates. Um, your your you know all the Helm templates have been absorbed and 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 the like, um, but it, it is um, leveraging everything on Azure. So we're, we we debated do we do um, uh, generic platform? I keep forgetting the name of the product. I cannot remember this for whatever. Um, but you're you're working with it right now for for various cloud deployments. Um, uh, you mean uh, Terraform? Yeah, thank you. For whatever reason, I cannot remember that. I've like got a blind blank spot in my in my brain when it comes to that. Um, we, we debated on looking at the Terraform, but we figured that from an open source standpoint, um, you would be doing that, and that's exactly where you where you've gone and what you what you're doing. Uh, plus, it, this is Microsoft driven, so we do want it to be all um, using, utilizing their stuff in their pipeline. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tom. Um, I'll pass it quickly to Mark from Microsoft and then just give it a wrap. While you're doing that, I want a quick follow up, though, to that one. Uh, I understood, uh, Greg, that you said you in you in uh, ingested or something the IC Helm charts. Yes. Is that right? Well, we, we, we leverage them. There are places where they're obviously used intact and there's places where they've been adjusted. Those are some of the artifacts we expect to give back. Yeah, and so the point being that, of course, that's highly uh, unstable now. We're in the process of going through a lot of transformation. That's likely to continue as that's really the actual release artifact of Mojaloop. So if yeah. this represents a snapshot in time, then there's going to be divergence unless we have a process for keeping those things in sync. And it would be useful to understand that better. Yeah, I, 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 I do agree. We're, we're using the current stable version. We're, we're not oh, doing it with, with, with 14 right now, but yeah. Um, so yeah, we definitely have to have to figure out how we we, we keep updating this as we go forward. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, great, fantastic. Thanks a lot, Greg. Um, just just to add a couple of remarks to to what Greg mentioned. My name is Mark Himoyan, work for Microsoft, leading our engineering core innovation and our Azure global team, and um, been uh, close conspirators with our. Uh, with Greg and his team, right, on this project, uh, myself and Jason Gregory, who's also online uh, from the Microsoft side. So just wanted to reemphasize a couple of things around the motivation for this project, right? So primarily three things, right, uh, around 
driving a cost-effective, you know, um, modular deployment on Azure, right? Because of course we know that that's going to basically result in, in in cost savings, right? And um, the second, of course, is to basically simplify or ease deployment, right? And I think that was part of the things that you know Greg kind of highlighted, with regards to getting this up on the marketplace, making it a very simple one-click deploy experience for people that want to kind of get this up and running within the sandbox-like environment. And, and and last but not least, of course, is you know. Okay, last but not least is really around, you know, um, the, the constraints, right, for um, uh, 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 from a regulatory constraint uh, standpoint, right, where, you know, there's requirements around data residency, around data sovereignty for a lot of the African countries, or many countries in particular, right, so given a very um, seamless and frictionless way to basically get this up and running on Azure stack is certainly a very key priority for us. And I know there was, you know, the question also about uh, MySQL on Stack. I mean, this is an internal discussion that we're going to be having with our Stack team, uh, the data platform team, to basically get, you know, MySQL up and running on Stack. So, so we certainly, I mean, I know that, you know, we're, we're, we're resourced for this project, right? At least with, with Greg and his team till till the end of June. But we we, we definitely feel that this uh, project is of significant priority internally within Microsoft, and we're going to, need to basically agitate to continue to do some more work on this. And, and um, I think one thing I also wanted to mention is we have a newly formed Africa Transformation Office, right? Uh, this actually came directly from the office of our CEO, right? To really have a holistic approach towards how we as Microsoft are looking at the opportunities uh, in, in, on the continent of Africa. And, and the thinking around, you know, um, uh, Mojaloop as a project, right, within, within Azure is that we want to be able to take this, and at least leveraging a lot of the connections and the contacts we have across the various countries to really, you know, um, um, to really take this project as a first class example, right, and basically get it replicated in as many countries across the continent as possible. So, um, so we plan to do some sort of a roadshow um, once this is up and running, once we get a pilot going and basically get that and utilize our influence, right, to be able to extend that out across other countries. So, so with that said, thank you very much. And we're very excited about this. And please feel free to grab me on the side um, after this so that we can talk some more if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Greg. Greg, there's a question for you in the Q&A from John. Oh. If, if you can pop in there and answer that, that would be appreciated. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, a round of applause for them, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Um, it's lunchtime. We're six, seven minutes into lunch. Um, and no, I will not give you seven minutes extra after lunch. But I do want to quickly give you a couple of things. Um, we've got a really packed program this afternoon all through the evening. Um, we'll be back for a couple of sessions. Uh, you hear from high people in Uganda. Uh, you hear from the Myanmar experience, the Mojali deployment this afternoon, um, and a couple of other interesting sessions. Um, you will hear of offline transactions. Uh, this is new to our community this time from folks called Payel Payala. That should be very interesting. And we'll also get some updates from, it's been a while since we heard from Mifos um, on Payment Hub. So that may be interesting to a couple of folks. After the last session, um, we will leave all our things in this room and we will go through this store outside to get our picture taken. Um, then once we have our picture taken, we will all come back and you can pick your stuff and you, can, you will have half an hour to get into your cocktail attire for those of you guys who carried one. Um, and then you will meet us again at 6 p.m. at the swimming pool. Um, very nice scenic location, I promise you. Um, and then we will have a cocktail reception this evening that will start from 6 to 7 p.m. So I am telling you this in advance so that you can space out your mind and plan your outfits and everything you need to do. Um, so I will give you a break. We'll be back at two o'clock to start with Hi People. Please be back in the room by 2 p.m. Um, as usual, Megan has a lunch cards. Please pick them from her at the back of the room. See you all at 2 p.m.